Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. We have some, um, I have some, uh, an announcement to make regarding an earthquake that has occurred in Turkey. There's been several large earthquakes. An eight, as a matter of fact, a 7.8, a 6.3, several large earthquakes here in Turkey. So we need to lift our brothers and sisters there up and um, to, to God and to pray for all the people there that have been affected because the buildings that they have there, a lot of them are um, cinder block construction as well as brick and mortar. That type of construction in an earthquake is known to collapse. And I don't know what the weather there in Turkey is now, if it's hot or if it's cold. But um, we know that there will be a lot of death. There will be a lot of people in need. The whole world is going to have to step up to try to help them. But I also want to point out to you that according to the Bible and according to the, the prophecy that Jesus gave to us um, on um, when his disciples asked him when they were by the temple what will be the sign of your coming in the end of this age and he says so I'm just going to read um, here part of Matthew 24 and it's a uh, um, sorry I'm in chapter 23 And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple because it was so beautiful and Jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and so you would think that oh there's going to be an earthquake but no, it was actually in 70 AD that the temple was destroyed. And then verse 3 here says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of this world, or this age? And Jesus answered and said unto them, his very first warning, the very first thing that he said was, Take heed that no man deceive you. Now we know Satan is going to come as a man. And there are going to be a lot of false prophets coming saying, I represent Jesus. I'm here at this Christian church and I'm going to tell you a bunch of lies and you're going to believe me because you don't study your Bible and you don't know and they're going to be led away to slaughter. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We see Russia and Ukraine and the, the um, NATO countries and Joe Pokemon there in the White House is trying to um, do his darndest to drag us into a war with um, Russia. Because Putin is against the New World Order and Biden is for it. And I'm sure you've heard um, Papa Bush talk about it. And then Clinton put the teeth to it. And now we've had Obama trying to push us in that direction, which the, the backlash of Obama was Trump. And now we have Joe Biden who um, don't ask me how he got in there because how a, a president could win an election campaigning from his basement, not answering questions to the press 
and holding um, campaign rallies where there were um, like six people there. How he won an election, I don't know, when the man that he was campaigning against had was a sitting president and had rallies where thousands of people would go. So how that happened, hmm, I wonder, wait a minute. Well, God sets up kings and he takes them down. He sets up kingdoms and he takes them down. So it's God's will that's being done. And that is how we have Joe Pokemon. So here we'll continue here now. So that's the wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And here verse 7 is the headlines that we could be reading for the events that are happening in this world now. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. So these famines, we're seeing that there's food shortages that's going to become more prevalent as time goes on. And pestilences where we had COVID and it's continuing. And then earthquakes in diverse places, various places. And these, these, these events are going to become more and more extreme and more and more intense as time goes on. And when we start seeing these things, it's the beginning of sorrows. Sorrows is considered... Um, a term used for a woman that's in labor and that um, the pain would start off light and easy and they would come very far apart but as time goes on those pains intensify and they come closer and closer together so we're starting to see these things that are spoken of here in the book of Matthew chapter 24 it's also, you can find that also in chap in Mark, in the book of Mark, chapter 13, and also in the book of Luke, chapter 21, where Jesus is speaking about these events as they're going to be occurring here at the end times. Now, I don't know if anyone is um, uh, signed up or subbed to the channel Dutch Sense. But he is um, giving the information on the earthquakes that have occurred there in Turkey. And he's just popped in again. And he's going to do another um, update. But um, we have seeing these um, things intensify. And so the earthquakes are becoming more intense. And so we're going to be seeing more earthquakes. They're going to be more intense, stronger ones, going to do a lot more damage. And they're going to come closer and closer together until when it is time for the birth, that pain will be so intense until the child is born. And that's why it's called sorrows, because a woman is in sorrow as she's, you know, progressing through her labor to bring birth of this child. But once the, the labor is over and the child is delivered, then the woman, seeing the child, is filled with joy and quickly forgets the sorrows of the pain that she had just went through delivering this child. But any woman that's been um, pregnant and, and has given birth to a child um, understands what um, being in labor means. Of course, a lot of um, people now are um, have uh, what they call spinal um, uh, uh, blocks so that they don't feel the pain. But if they didn't have that medicine, They'd certainly be feeling the pain, as did Mary and women all around the world that don't have the medical um, facilities that we have here in the United States and other places in the world. But So um, I'm going to put a um, link 
in the description box to Dutch Sense, so you can go over and he it will explain how the earthquakes are occurring, how what we can expect to come next. And he's very good at forecasting earthquakes. And um, I also want to lift lift up a brother of ours. His name is Bill, and um, he's needing prayer. He had um, lymphoma a long time ago, about 20 years ago. And now he's feeling like it's come back. So we want to pray that God would take that away. That God would, knowing <laughs> every cell in our body, restore his body to a perfect condition. And that if it is God's will or God allows him to have lymphoma again, that God would provide a way that Bill would be able to continue to provide for himself in paying his own bills and not be a burden on anyone. As many of us feel that same, that very same way, we feel like we don't want to be a burden to our family or, or our friends. We want to be able to provide for ourselves. And God can certainly do that. And if it's his will, it'll be done. So I'd like to ask you to pray for Bill that his body be made super healthy. And that um, if it is that he does have the lymphoma come back again, um, that God would make it possible that he would be able to keep his job and have the time off that he needs to get treatment. But I prayed for Bill, and I do believe God is faithful and true, and that I've asked for this in Jesus' name to the Father, that Father will, will make this happen and make it so and heal him. But if you could please join me in lifting him up for prayer, that would be most wonderful. And as always, I love you.